All right, so for the last, uh, let's just say, four to five years, I've had a running joke with my friend Sean that this is our year to be invited to the Rock Nation brunch. Even last year, I had a former Rock Nation artist, Bridget Kelly. <sighs> she was viewing some of my Instagram stories. So I thought this was my moment. But then I just realized that those were just bots. And that wasn't really her. And I was a little hurt. I was definitely a little hurt. But pretty much to keep it real, what I love about the Rock Nation Brunch, well, actually, let's take it back. For the people that don't know what Rock Nation Brunch is, <coughs> it's pretty much Jay-Z and Diddy's Grammy party. So they have a brunch where they bring all the, the great black celebrities out and they pretty much just have a good time. There's a lot of photos taken. I haven't seen any food, but I would want to assume that there's food. Uh, I believe there's food. Don't hold me on that, but I want to say there's food there. But every year, it looks like it's just a great time. And some of my favorite artists, people I've grown up to, like Jay-Z, like Diddy, like Dipset, like Beyonce, like Rihanna, like uh, Jeezy. Like, everybody else in between is there at the Rock Nation Brunch. But really, after five years of waiting by the mailbox every year for my invitation, enough is enough. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change! I might have to do this on my own. I might need to bring the Rock Nation Brunch to Virginia. The Rebel Nation Brunch. That's what it is. The Rebel Nation Brunch. So... Since I'm pretty trash with throwing events, I feel like I need somebody in my corner who can point me in the right direction. Who can be my Obi-Wan Kenobi to guide me through the event landscape. So I think I have somebody. So, well, I know I have somebody. So, let's go. <laughs> So yeah, it's my first time coming down here to actually go to this hotel. So it's a brand new hotel that, you know, I've been hearing a lot of great things about, but uh, I heard it's like something completely different than your regular standard hotel. So hopefully, I know it's gonna be dope. I, I just know it's gonna be dope. And the person I meet with is gonna have something dope for me. So let's get into it. What's going on people, this is Shad, and uh, today is another edition of the people I met online. So before I introduce this guy right here, um, I just wanna talk about how I actually came across you. So I met you through my wife and a whole bunch of mutual friends. And so I think it was at some gathering that we all had and we met and I'm like, oh, he's a real cool dude. And then you say, you know, you do events and all that stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, that's dope, that's dope. And then we went to a whole separate friends, like, 
gathering or whatever. I'm like, oh, why is there again? Like, so he knows everybody. Right. And so for some reason, I always figured like everywhere we'll go, you'll be there. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> you know everybody around here. Yeah. 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 So for the people that don't know you, who are you and what do you do? Yes. So Ryan Wynn, born and raised Chesapeake, Virginia, mm-hmm. um, been here pretty much most of my life, went and studied at the University of Virginia, okay. came back home because I didn't have a job, you know, during <laughs> that whole uh, intermission part of where jobs are a little scared so right, right. came back home but I came back home with the passion of doing event planning okay. uh, initially went to college to do architecture that didn't work out so well yeah. um, but my creative side paired with me loving to be able to plan mm-hmm. and we went off from there came back though to the area wasn't as nice as I thought it would be um, as far as um, people in the industry yeah. wanting to help and wanting to build you and things like that and so I made my way working at venues and mm-hmm. kind of well, worked my reputation out that way and okay. built up in the area and then now we're full-fledged Arwen Collective. Okay so what does Arwen Collective actually do? Our, so Arwen Collective is a collection of different things that I've been blessed um, to be skilled in. Okay. So we have three different sections, one being events, of course, mm-hmm. handling weddings, corporate events, um, holiday parties, anything that you can imagine within the events world. Mm-hmm. I have a design piece as well that handles interior design, staging. The Lord has blessed me to be able to draw a little bit. So okay. I draft I as well. Know. Yeah, so okay. I draft or I do sketches for different clients and okay. things like that. Um, it's all encompassed in the design. And then concierge is another piece where I help clients from full circle. So actually last night I just did a dinner party for a client where mm-hmm. I put together the whole tablescape. Um, I I planned for the caterer to come in. Uh, we had a private chef to come in and do a full um, three-course meal for them. It under concierge? It does. Okay. okay. It does. So concierge basically is providing a service for somebody. And okay. so I'm able to provide a full spectrum of service for them mm-hmm. to be able to assist in the areas where they can. They're basically saying, Ryan, here's the date, here's the time. You do everything else. Okay. So it's pulling all of the things together, which essentially can kind of be event planning as well. Right, right, right. Um, that concierge piece is more so on a smaller scale, I would say. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I know you said one of your main things that you do is events. Yes. So what do you feel like makes your event stand out compared to anybody else? It, it would definitely be the amount of years I've been in the game. Okay. I'm pushing 10 years now at this point. Mm-hmm. And I have a well-rounded background with the events world because I worked in large venues. Mm-hmm. At one point, I was at the um, top hotel in the area right. um, so and handling high-profile events and things like that there at that location. And then moved to another yeah. high-profile um, venue as well. So that incorporated with the skills that I bring to the table as far as being organized, efficient, um, exceptional with my customer service, with my clients, provides them with a different set of skills um, that they won't just always find for themselves gotcha gotcha okay so what is like I know you say you have a lot of things listed within your collective but any of those things that you actually love doing more than any of the others yeah honestly the concierge piece I think is what's gonna really? take off and take flight most right. um, within that section I also do a vendor services okay. so um, throughout the time that I was working full-time jobs to kind of get my itch um, uh, taken care of from working a full-time job and wanting to fulfill my passion of events world, I would go and work with other vendors in the industry. So yeah. if it was another planner, I would go in and be their assistant for the day. Right, or if right. it was an event designer, I would go in and be lugging columns for them right, or right. you know putting up pipe and drape. Yeah. And so that aspect now I'm going to incorporate more because I've built a real great rapport with the different vendors over this time period and to where they still will subcontract me to come in and provide services for them. It's easier because I've been in the industry for a long time Mm -hmm. to bring me in versus an intern that doesn't really know what they're doing all the time. They can bring in somebody that's going to think like them to be able to have a great and successful event. Okay. So you just mentioned that you kind of just became a full-time entrepreneur or uh, yeah, so you're in that space now. So how has that been going for you? It's been great, honestly. It's uh, we're at the eight month mark okay. now uh, of making that, taking that leap of faith, and yeah. it's honestly been awesome. There's, you know, it's 
something I've gotten to get used to yeah. a little bit. It's way different than being in the corporate world um, and having to do, you know, nine to five and getting up at a certain time. But there's different things that I've learned about myself and what I, how I need to work and how I need to kind of incorporate things um, in my day to day. And one of the biggest things I've learned or that I would impart or as advice for other entrepreneurs that are thinking of making that step is that one, each business is always different and you have to be your own boss. So though I may be able to work, um, you know, at eight o'clock in the morning yeah, and yeah. go until a certain part in the day, other people are not that way. So, you know, you kind of figure out what your mold is. I'm a night owl, so I'll start, hit the ground running at 12 in the afternoon and be going until sending out emails at 2 a.m. in the morning just because that's kind of how that works for me. Whereas, you know, some people don't always yeah, work yeah, yeah. out that way. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh with every video that I do, I try to give, you know, a nugget or a gem or just advice to people who are wanting to be you. Yeah. So what advice would you give event planners or people in the concierge industry mm -hmm. who are just starting out? Yeah, definitely research, research, research. Um, with your research, you learn so much more. Um, one of the things in dating back, like when people first told me that I should be an event planner, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to be an event planner. I'm a right. guy. I don't want, and my mindset was just wedding planners yeah, yeah, yeah. until I researched it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, event planning means so much more than just weddings. Though it's a niche for me now, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that my, my small mind wasn't allowing me to be open enough to grow right, and figure right, out that right, there was right, so right. much more involved in it. So I would say that research piece is key in this industry because you learn the trends and things of what's going on uh -huh. and then you just put your spin on it. Okay, okay. All right, cool, cool. So now that we got to get to know you a, l a little bit more, yeah. I feel like it's time to talk about the questions or the issues that I have Okay. that maybe you can help me out with. Okay. All right, so we had to do a little quick uh, switch of scenery, but I wanted to kind of get with you on some things that I personally need. Yes. So, as I told you before, one of my main goals is like, I want to have the Rock Nation brunch mm -hmm. and I want to bring it Virginia. So, two part question. First, what do you feel like is the essentials to a great event? I used to throw events, all my events were trash. Okay. So now I'm trying to do something big to kind of highlight different creators and entrepreneurs and pretty much like the, the movers and shakers of the area to kind of come out to an event. So what do you feel like the essentials for a great event? Yeah, definitely um, location. Okay. When you're at a venue that's sought after, mm -hmm. it's easier to get people to come to it. Sure. Uh, so that's one of the biggest things. Um, marketing is another thing. I think in this area, we struggle with the fact that we don't know things are going on. So yeah. we, you know, we say, oh, D.C. and New York and Atlanta are like, there's always something going on. Mm -hmm. But here in our area, there are. It's a lot of stuff going that, on down here. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on. But I feel like the marketing that people do for their events is just not enough to where it's not always in your face. Mm -hmm. I've, I know, for example, you know, me being in the industry and I've it'll be after the weekend and I found out that something was going on and I'm like, wait a minute, I had no clue that this even took place. Anymore. Right, and I feel like even like the bigger events that like a lot of people go to like Wine Fest or anything mm -hmm. like that, people just know about it. Right, and I think those are kind of word of mouth. Yeah. You in your circles, you kind of do, but I've run into people that have eaten, never even been to Wine Festival before. Really? And it's something that I go to every year. Yeah. But I know, yeah. you know, Trust that's me. something, right, exactly. Um, but that's, you know, something that I've heard, I've told people about it and they're like, oh really? Like they had no clue. And that's literally one of, to me, one of the largest events in at least Norfolk, yeah. um, but in our area, like yeah. definitely. But there was a taco festival over at Town Point Park, and it's this year I found out it was the third year that they had it, and I have no clue, had never heard about it at all. And I love tacos, so <laughs> I've heard about Taco Fest, I just never been. Yeah. Now, there's two of them too there's one that happens on the oceanfront, and then there's one I kn always knew about that one, but it overlaps. Um, the weekend of wine festival, so I've never attended that one, but there's one that happens <laughs> yeah, downtown yeah. Norfolk, yeah, yeah, yeah so. Okay. Yeah, so I think that, you know, your marketing and your venue are, you want to highlight things for clients to make them want to be able to participate in it. Okay. And I think, too, if you're, you're thinking about a brunch, having an aspect of uh, an amazing chef mm -hmm. or venue that the food people know is going to be good, right. that draws people. And those are one of the main things that people walk away. 
whether it's a conference, a wedding, a birthday party, you always remember the food. True. True, true, true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So my second part of that question is, what do you feel like I need to do to bring, to create a Rock Nation brunch, the Rebel Nation brunch? Yes. So first step would be having a dope event planner. Of course. To take care yeah, of yeah, things yeah. for you. Um, but it would be like we talked about earlier, doing your research, finding out things that, um, you know, would work in the area. Um, we can't always recreate the wheel. So to speak, but you put your twist on things that already take place and make it your own. I think that funneling it in to be able to put a unique spin on maybe something that's already happening or tap into other organizations. Um, it's looking at you know your clientele and your audience. So seeing you know what age group that you're trying to market right. to to be in attendance to it or what influencers actually you know are better prepared to be a great marketing piece yeah, for that yeah. different clientele you know there's that TikTok now yeah i'm in an era where you i don't know TikTok. anything about TikTok, <laughs> but if you're trying to grasp a younger audience yeah. that's your main you know nah, that ain't, that ain't it right no there. not yet no no no. okay um but there's different things yeah, like yeah, that yeah, that right. you know that where if you want to go to an older clientele facebook <laughs> you yeah. know they're on there my parents are on there all the time mm -hmm. so it's kind of learning um learning your audience too is one of the keys to making it a successful and a, a packed event you don't want an event where two people are showing up you want to pack it out because then that is showcasing then they're on oh i gotta go to this uh, because it was an amazing event okay okay all right well i definitely appreciate you taking time out of your busy and chaotic day to kind of you know show me around this wonderful hotel yeah. to give me advice on things that i really need to do with my life yeah. so where can people find you at man so i'm on instagram and facebook arwen collective um is where i'm at like so you can find me that way and my website is arwencollective.com as well so i hope you like this video Thank you for Ryan for kind of steering me in the right direction on the things that I need to make happen to make the Rebel Nation brunch come to fruition. Also, thank you to my new favorite hotel, Glasslight in downtown Norfolk for welcoming us and allowing us to come in there and film and just really show everything that you guys have to offer. So thank you for that. And lastly, if you haven't done so already, please, please, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, as well as if you like this video, then by all means, go ahead and click, I think it's in this corner, this corner, this corner. I think it's this corner. Go ahead and click these videos. These are some of my latest and greatest videos that I feel like you enjoy. And so go ahead and check those out. And so that's it. I'm Shad Harris and y'all have a good one.